right, TAC TV fans, we're at the Tamfoglio factory where they produce not only their line of handguns, but the Strike One polymer frame handgun. TV fans, I'm here with the founders and owners of Arsenal Farms, our good friend Dmitry Strasinski, his wife Susanna, Nicola Bandini, and they're going to take us through the current lineup of products. Now, from what I understand, what he's told me, you're kind of the sanity checker on all this. You're the person that... You, <laughs> Trying to be. Yeah. <laughs> More than that, there is a nice story that we're going to say in a minute. Okay. We didn't think that we would uh, you know, live for a hundred years on the double battle, right. although now it has conquered a full establishment by itself, you know, it's a full-fledged product. Hey guys, here we are, but we have something else. Mm -hmm. And that's where this comes in. And this is what comes in. And this is what we were, at the time, we were developing in parallel. Actually, the two products have come together, you know, in parallel with a huge effort. But it took some convincing from my side. The story started like this. We were trying to find the, or outsource the designer, okay? but. You, you need to have balls for, for this, honestly. I have to admit that uh, neither me nor Nicola uh, had enough balls to, to, to start. No, we didn't that's, dare. That's, that's, we didn't this dare. is a true story because uh, uh, we were trying to find somebody, and Suzanne, uh, we were talking with Susanna, and she, she told me, but you, guys, you can do it yourself. You have a fantastic design team. I mean, and I, I told this to Nicola, and Nicola said, no way, we can, we're going to fail miserably. No way. So uh, she said, I was insisting yeah. that we, we have uh, the biggest collection of 3D, yeah. all the guns, our engineers know all the details of all Inside the guys out, yeah. in the, in the, uh, all the guns in the world. So, why? It was a crazy push, yeah. crazy push. I don't think that without her pushing us, we would have been there. It was a crazy push. Yeah, you, need, you needed some, some inspiration to start this. And we were blessed with luck and uh, on the yeah. wings of of enthusiasm, and, you know, we did it, and, you know, and this, we truly think with humbleness, we are convinced that this gun will set the benchmark for a long time, you know? It's got a lot of really unique features, that's the thing I was talking to you about before, and you also, the locking mechanism, for instance, is very unique. But, uh, if I may say so, Larry, apart from the smaller features like the ambidextrous, permanent ambidextrous magazine release, and the single arch trigger safety here. These are okay, no? And the lowest bore center on hand grip in history is 12 millimeters, okay? The next up is 18. So, you know, as a, the lower you get and the less... Less, less muzzle whip. Right. Yeah. But the most important thing is that, you know, having fixed measurements, ergonomics to the hand of any pistol grip, from this distance to this distance is fixed. You can only have a play of a quarter of an inch maximum back and forth. So, incidentally, because of slide travel, you know, of total slide travel, also the breach of the barrel is a fixed dimension from this point. And therefore, all the tilting Browning Petter barrels all have their ramp or hinge, like caught, over the trigger hinge. So they are two hinge points in this axle. And we placed it in this axle because the lock is in front of the chamber. Therefore, everything has dramatically gone low. This is the major ergonomy issue in the gun, and of course the lock, and of course all the inside story. When I first saw pictures of the gun and actually saw the video of it being shot, I thought it was some kind of delayed blowback because it was so low. And I was like, well, it's nine millimeter, and, and I wondered how you were doing it. Only when 
we visited you when we busted apart, did I actually see how the lock worked? You can see the, actually the revolutionary feature here by doing this. Yep. Lock and lock. Unlock. Yep. Lock and lock. And completely box lock. The four locks are completely around the center of pressure. So the barrel does not tilt down or up upon bullet travel. So it's absolutely centered. The same all the time. That is why it's so accurate, besides being in line battle, it's so accurate on the target and so fast, because it's so sh such a short travel. When do you anticipate we'll be able to see him in the US? So we are submitting uh, the copy, uh, the, the sample of uh, uh, Strike One in the beginning of October. And... Uh, take it from there. Yeah, we'll take it from there, yeah. I can't wait to get mine. <laughs> you, you'll, you'll be the first one. <laughs> There's no Excellent. questions about it. Excellent. Alright gang, before we shoot the Strike One handgun, we need to see how it's made. And it's made right here at Tanfoglio's factory. Alright, we're down here at the Strike One manufacturing facility, which happens to be co-located with Tanfoglio. And Nicola is going to take us through the manufacturing steps involved with making the slide for the Strike One. Right, which is a very different slide that was go we're going to see. We start from a hot drop forging of high, high quality steel, which is higher than average for a slide and the industry worldwide. And then we go through the first process of deep drilling and squaring. After this, we have a first annealing process and some emptying of the slide inside, which will entail some warping and twisting. Therefore, we'll go through with final inside squaring of the slide. Extra materials left from that. Left so from that. Skim cut it. Correct. Uh, then we do the outside. All the contour, the opening of the ejection port, you know, the front barrel and recoil spring holes, and some more machining inside and we have a special machine to do that which we can see later which will make the bolt square yeah, to exactly nice. standard. And the last step is to finish by electro erosion which is another interesting station the very special and unique locking recess for our patented system of drop and block and here we have the finish assembled ready to go to be assembled onto the pistol and to shoot. A lot of work in that. Yeah, sure. A lot of tooling oh, yeah. for all this station, you know. It uh, takes about a year to tool up to come to this point yeah. for one component. Because then we have the under battle block, we have the battle, the locking block, we have all the other small components which require a lot of tooling. Excellent. We're ready to move on if you are. Exactly. Let's Thank you. All right, Nicola, if you don't mind, run me through what this station is all about. This uh, pre-access machine, the CNC, will actually bring the slide of the strike from the first squaring process to the first internal substantial machining on two positions, automatically, double panel. Okay? This is a high capacity machine. This is the most first important emptying of the slide inside. Okay, Nicole, I know we've jumped forward a few steps. What do we got here? The gentleman behind us is starting from this position and on another machine. We have another complete different tooling uh, doing the outside of the slide. So the final contour, serrations, ejection port, front holes, all is being done on this machine. We have this done already as we've seen before and now we finish the slide on the outside as we see behind us. Bye bye. Nicole, if you would take us through the unique procedure that you have to go through making the breach face. The breach face, we can only work with, with, with the net automatic uh, uh, CNC machines to a certain degree of breach face. In order to finish it at 90 degrees, we have to have a radial insertion of this special material behind us so to, to make a perfectly square 
and tight tolerance with the locking system breach phase. To have the pistol really perform how it should. All right, Nicola, take us through the details of what happens here on the Strike One barrel. This is also another critical component, of course, actually the critical component of the gun. We have this battle made with uh, absolute pre-chambering concentricity. Actually, the pre-chambering is done together with the rifle. Therefore, we want to keep that the same while we finish the chamber. And what happens here on this machine, we have a floating, piloted floating rim, a chamber rim, that is floating, so it's following what is already absolutely concentric. Stay tuned for more on the Strike One pistol from Arsenal Firearms here in Italy. All right, TAC TV fans, let me introduce the crew I got here with me from Arsenal Firearms, Nicola Bandini, Dmitry Strasinski, and his wife, Susanna. And we have a historically significant moment that's about to take place. What do we got here, gang? Well, we have a very welcome to TAC TV here because you come at the right time, the right place, to witness the first batch of Flight 1 industrial assembly, pseudo production assembly, behind us. Up to now, basically it's been pre-production prototype guns. Pre-production, well, prototype, prototype, prototypes, you know, three different generations of prototypes over about one, one and a half years. Then pre-production, pre-serial production, a wider batch. And now this is, you know, in the thousands, starting assembly today. The first 10 guns. Exactly. So this is the... Tag TV. Yeah, this is the first uh, absolutely industrial slide of strike been assembled right in front of us. Okay, it's interesting to note that we're still at Tenfoglia. We're in the second floor. As a matter of fact, fourth generation family, Tenfoglio is assembling the first 10 guns. So we have kind of a historic moment here and it fits right into the Tenfoglio story. Yeah, Giuseppe is the son of Massimo Tenfoglio. And uh, we have a uh, owner of the gun being assembled by Tenfoglio. Okay, we know these are the first 10. How many do you expect to anticipate having built by the end of the year? By the end of the year, we're gonna build about 3,000 guns. And uh, next year, we can build from 20,000 up to whatever our capacity would allow us. Right, so small beginnings, but once it gets going, it's gonna get going big time. Yeah, absolutely. Good deal. Let's take it through the process and test fire. Okay. We're here in the famous Italian gun making valley visiting Tenfoglio and also where they manufacture the Strike One handgun. Facility is kind of what I expected. It's a mix of old and new. They have some new machines that you see being used for Tenfoglio and the Strike One. And they have also, because they've been around for a long time, they have a mixture of old machines. And I've seen this in a number of manufacturers I've been to, Colt, Smith & Wesson, various places. They've been around for a number of years. They have specialized machines that do certain things and it just makes more sense to, to maintain that versus getting something brand new to do it from scratch. Nicola took me through really the slide making process for the Strike One, which that's kind of the most complex thing they have on the gun, uh, minus the, 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 the inner frame and the, and the polymer frame. But they, he took me through how they make the slide, which is fairly complicated. And there's, there's actually two critical procedures on it. One is how they make the breech face, how they cut the breech face, and also talk me through how they make the locking block recess, which is EDM, as I suspected. EDM is a, a form of electro disc charge machining, and they essentially, it's a way for an electric diode to go down in and do a very precise cut. You see it in various places in the firearms industry. They try to avoid it when possible. It's very, very accurate, and for certain specialized cuts, it's about the only way to do it. I spotted right off the bat with the slide, essentially the, the locking block on the Strike One, I knew immediately they had to make it by EDM. It'd be very, very difficult to machine that. Not necessarily impossible, but it'd be easier to do with EDM. 
What you see with strike one is it's kind of cut from the same cloth as the current trend of striker fired polymer frame hangers. One thing I noticed right off the bat, it really became apparent when we came here to the production facility, is Tampoglio and Strike One are really very closely tied together. Uh, they're not only they're good friends, they're business partners, you know, all the main players. And so you can really say in a lot of ways the Strike One is made at the same location as the Tampoglio handle. Okay, we're out here at the range with the Arsenal Firearms crew. I have an OD Green pre-production model with a black slide. Dimitri, what do you got? I have stainless steel, Arizona. Tactical black. Tactical black, that's the first production model off the line. We're fixing to light them up. Stay tuned. Okay, we're here at an outdoor range at Gardonia Valtrumpia, right down the road from Arsenal Firearms and Tonfoglio. Now, just the other day, we saw the first Strike One assembled off the production line. Since then, off camera, they did an extensive amount of shooting, put a lot of rounds down range to make sure, in fact, the manufacturing process is doing what it's supposed to. Now, we're going to get a chance to shoot that same gun out here on the range, as well as some other Strike One pistols. All right, we're going to let the real power broker in Arsenal Firearms go first. Susanna, you want to shoot yours first? Yes. OK. <laughs> Ladies first. At Grudy. Hey, Susanna, you made a couple comments off camera, and I wanted to kind of capture it for the folks at home. You shot a little bit with other guns. Yes. What was your impression from those guns to the Strike One? The difference is that it's much, much softer and uh, recoil it, it's much less on your hand. You don't feel it because I have a woman's hand, mm -hmm. so it doesn't hurt at all your hand. So it's uh, much better for w women than uh, other people. Now, based on some of the other guns I believe you shot, you know, those are hammer fired guns. It's a striker fired gun also. This has a much lot lower line of board of the hand. That no doubt helps. Yes, of course, because you just aim like with your finger, literally. You aim your finger and you shoot. Ooh. That's it. You don't need special, <laughs> special, uh, how, how you call it, special uh, training for that. You just aim, aim and shoot. So the point there would be, I guess, if female shooters are interested in looking at possibly other handguns or their first handgun, take a look at the strike one. Yes, for sure. I loved it. All right. Is that the first time <laughs> you've shot one? Time, yeah. Oh, it's very appropriate then, and you fired it out here on the range first. Yes. Excellent. Now, with your <laughs> blessing, the boys will have some fun. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, we had a historically significant visit here to Italy with the Arsenal Firearms Crew, and we were able to bring out the first production Strike One pistol and shoot it here at the range. Now, been a long journey. How long has it been, Dimitri, from when you guys started till today? Two years. Two years. Now, when do you anticipate this pistol be available in the United States, and what kind of price are the guys going to look at in gun shops? <laughs> well, this for sure. God willing, we will have it in the beginning of 2014, like after Christmas, I would say, just before, across Christmas, okay? okay. And uh, price will be competitive to any other major player on the U.S. market. In the striker fired polymer frame market. Exactly. Good deal. Correct. Okay, Susanna, closing thoughts. What did you think about it? I shot it. I loved it. Cannot wait. Shoot it again. <laughs> <laughs> Dimitri. Well, uh, I'm on the more commercial side, so I'm, I cannot wait to get this gun to the United States <laughs> to bring it to the U.S. public uh, and uh, uh, to 
be judged by American shooters. That's, Good that's, deal. That's the challenge. The cool one. Well, we think uh, we are looking uh, commercially as well, but uh, I think we should also look to the future. We we really all set out here to leave a sign behind. I think with the strike one, we will leave a sign behind. Time will tell, the markets will tell. We want to be humble here and push ahead at best of quality and best of reliability. This is our mission. Okay, one of the things that I like to see in the firearms industry are companies that think out of the box. That's how real innovation comes to the marketplace. For sure, Arsenal Firearms is definitely a company that thinks out of the box. When you look at the 2011 A1 and the Strike 1, you guys are breaking new ground. Kudos. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next week back here on TAC TV. Hey, thanks for watching the Vickers Tactical YouTube channel. To subscribe, click here. And to watch some of my favorite videos, click here. Have a good one. LAV out.